So we'll start with the corner pin here, and I'm just going to save this out. Now whichever one we choose, whether it's corner pin or uh, basic motion, they both get exported out as um, .xml files. So let's save that there. In fact, let's give this a decent name rather than layer 1. We'll call this a screen pin. Have that layer selected, export out that tracking data. Distort, save that out. Screen pin, yeah, that'll do. Uh, distort. Cool, and let's pop in to Final Cut. So in Final Cut Pro, let's import that tracking data. So the easiest way to do it is either to come up to File, Import, XML, or just right click or control click in the bin and go Import XML here. And then there it comes, Screen Distort XML, choose that. Leave the uh, default settings as they are, and that just brings that in. So here it is, Mocha Distort Screen Pin. Now, first thing to do is give this a proper name because this will start to uh, start to rack up with, with lots of clips of the same name, so that would not be good. So we'll call this Screen Distort 1. Now if I dump this on the timeline here, you can see it's the original clip, but it's got the distort data in there as well. So it's corner pinned it. So if we put that over the top of our original, you can see it all matches up very nicely. Now it's uh, very rare that you would want to corner pin uh, an image inside itself. So let's take our next clip, which is going to be the screen clip here, and we'll just put that on to video track two. Now how do we get the corner pin data from this clip down here onto our screen clip? Well, it's easy as copy, so right click, control click, copy, then paste attributes. And we want to paste the distort attributes there. So that's going to be our corner pin attributes. But we want to turn off scale attribute times. If we don't do that and our clip is longer than the uh, original clip that we tracked, what's going to happen is we're going to get a huge mismatch between our, our tracked data and uh, what we want to be tracked. So if I turn that on there, there we go. That's all in there. So just double click on that, come into my motion tab. You can see under the distort, I've got a keyframe for every frame. Now what some of the more observant of you would have noticed is that at the sides, I'm still missing um, parts, of my, parts of my footage. What's happened here is that my original footage at 1425 by uh, 850 is not the same size as my target uh, timeline, which is 1920 by 1080. So I could try to, to scale this up, uh, but that would be a bit of a nightmare and wouldn't match up properly. So the easiest way is to actually pre-compose it inside a, uh, uh, an, another timeline. So come to my new sequence and call this screen insert. Open this up. Make sure that these settings here, so uh, Apple Zero for, for uh, sequence settings, Make sure that these are set to the same as my target is. So 90, 20 by 1080, square pixels, no field dominance, 30 frames a second. Now if I put my screen insert, oops, let's put my screen one, sorry, inside there. And just load this into the uh, viewer. Now I can use a combination of scaling, a combination of scaling and the aspect ratio distort in here. To fill that out. So actually that's looking pretty good. So what I can do is now use this screen insert timeline on my uh, on my clip. So let's just get rid of that. Uh, take my screen insert timeline and just overwrite that in. So again copy the data from here, paste attributes onto there distort, turn off scale attribute times, and there we go, fits perfectly. Now another nice thing about this is that because we're using the distort in the motion tab here, we can also use uh, Final Cut built-in motion blur. So if I turn motion blur on it looks hideous, 
because the default values are a bit hideous. So I take percentage of blur to 100% and take my samples to 16 to give myself something a bit smoother. And now you can see that I've got a nice, uh, I've got a nice little motion blur that matches my clip in. Cool. I can also do other little things like uh, remember we had that reflection I wanted to keep in. If I turn my composite mode down here, just by right clicking and turning my composite mode to overlay, I can uh, keep that in. It's gone a bit dark. Put my color corrector over the top there. Boost up my mids. Boost up my whites. We we'll take the blacks down a little bit there. But now, oh, there's the little reflection just cutting in there. Very nice. Take the saturation up. There we go. Very nice indeed. Of course, that's the, the straightforward way of using the corner pin data. Uh, but we've also got another couple of things we can do. So if I come straight back into Mocha again, export out the tracking data as the basic motion. Save that. Call this uh, screen transform one. There we go. And into final cut and import that XML in now. Screen transform one. Take the defaults there. Mocha basic motion. So let's call this match move transform. So as before, let's use the uh, the original clip in there. It's given us all our data that we need to so the scale, rotation, and center data. Uh, let's come over to this one clip back here. And what shall I do? Let's just create text. One called tracked. Bring that in. Do the same as we did before. So copy, paste attributes, take my basic motion this time, turn off scale attribute times. And now that is tracked. So it's not done the corner pin uh, distortion, but what it has done is just matched in our move with the scale, rotation, and center there. Now the reason it's taken all of those out is because when we did the original track, remember I used my translation scale and rotation here. 